Hello and welcome to our short presentation on the bigger picture to your picture, focusing on technology today. My name is Steph Jackson and I'm an Enterprise Risk Management Consultant here at Ecclesiastical. So the riskier landscape, the last few years, what a period, significant uncertainty, what a turbulent adventure we've all been on. All sorts of big, what we call black swan events coming through to those big scale, big magnitude events um, that are often unlikely to happen and happen once in a 200 year event. But when they do, they can be catastrophic and we're seeing them come one after another. We're seeing COVID-19. We're still experiencing uh, that ongoing impact, still having its ripple effect there. We're seeing terrible things going on in Ukraine also seeing Brexit still coming through and having an impact. We're experiencing ongoing challenges and the world's evolved to adapt with new ways of living and working in response to these large scale risks uh, that we keep experiencing. Could this uncertainty be here to stay? Will it ever end now the boat has been rocked? How can we continue to respond and be as best prepared as we can going forwards? By looking at some of these bigger risk themes on the horizon, we can start to understand how they can relate to us and bring them into our picture. Understand what we can do to be a bit more proactive and to anticipate the risks so we can respond in good time in a well controlled manner. So what we can see is we can see the global risk reports, key themes coming through. The reports produced by a whole breadth of global risk experts showing all their different expertise and risk perceptions from around the world. <clears throat> We've got a number of different themes coming through. Expected to have some sort of impact over the coming years. We've got adverse technological advances already seen a big shift in digital transformation following that response to COVID and having to work from home. Asset bubble bursts, We've seen cyber security failure. And we're beginning to understand here how some of these big themes and risks can work together and tessellate. As we get those advances in technology, we've got to be extra cyber resilient. We know that carries that big cyber risk. Geoeconomic confrontation, natural resource crisis, focusing on those water sources and What's that going to look like going forwards? Livelihood crisis, human environmental damage, mental health deterioration. Again, we can start to see some links coming through. Livelihood crisis, that pressure, inflation and cost, social cohesion erosion, infectious diseases. We've seen that coming through a pandemic. We've seen things like monkeypox hit the media as well. So ongoing. Digital inequality as well. Has everybody got access to that ever growing technological environment? Climate action change failure, debt crisis. Again, we're seeing that grow and rising costs. Biodiversity loss, seeing an increase in extreme weather events. So we're seeing more of them on a greater scale. Again, interlinked climate change action failure potentially and involuntary migration. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a couple of these themes today from a technological perspective and bring them closer to our picture and what they could mean for us and start thinking about some key ideas, how we can strengthen and become more resilient. I'm going to start with cyber security failure. So technology, we know it brings lots of opportunities and we know it's an area that we have become heavily reliant on following COVID lockdown periods and significant digitisation of the world around us. But also digitisation carries a significant level of risk. Are we cyber resilient? You can see a couple of statistics here. Ransomware has increased by 105 percent. Malicious software again increased by 6 percent. Encrypted threats increased by 167 percent. So it's going on, it's increasing those cyber criminals become smarter, always trying to think ahead of the game. Have we got 
a good cyber resilient strategy in place? Have we got access to the right expertise? Are we identifying hotspots and vulnerabilities in our use of data to safeguard us? I think most importantly as well with cyber, have we got the right level of awareness in pupils and staff of the potential um, to create those kind of hotspots where malicious emails or suspicious activity can hit us? Moving on to digital inequality. So we've got an estimated 11.7 million people. So that's 22% of the UK without digital skills needed now for everyday life. We've got that ever-growing increase in use of technology. Lots of technological advances going on around us. We've got 16% are unable to use the internet and the devices themselves. So is the population keeping up with that technological move? 7% are completely offline. So whilst we do appreciate um, we've often got good systems. We've often got that state of technological advances there. Have we got the appropriate budget to continually invest and keep up to date? Have we got adequately skilled teaching staff, support staff to continue to educate pupils, staff, and support technological needs within our educational establishments? Have pupils got the relevant access required? We know that they have, but is there something that we can do? Is there something more we can do to uh, offer our technological services and share our resources with perhaps other individuals that don't have that access? Could we do more from a charitable perspective, from a charitable status and sharing those resources? Adverse outcomes of te technological advances. So here we've got the top five negative impacts of technology. Relationships and social skills issues, health problems, browsing online can be dangerous. Mobile device overuse can reduce quality of sleep and smartphones can affect relationships with children. Those are just a, a, a couple, but it's not an exhaustive list, just a few of the negative impacts that we're beginning to experience from technology. We're seeing people using technological devices during the day. We're seeing screen time ongoing. We're seeing people using phones. Um, we're seeing pupils and staff watching TV. So it's that ongoing exposure to screens. What impact is it having on us? And what can we do about that? Have we got the right balance in place? How do we kind of monitor that usage, but monitor it realistically, responsibly? How are we raising awareness and educating pupils in the overuse of technology? Also thinking about cyberbullying, that adverse impact, what are we doing to prevent that and how can we identify it and be proactive rather than pick it up after it's happened? How can we stop it, have it identify perhaps whilst it's happening rather than after it's already happened? What policies do we have in place to provide protection and prevention? So there's quite a few to things to think about from a technological perspective. In summary, Use your risk management approach to scan the horizon. Have a look at those bigger risk themes that are coming through. Use the Global World Economic Risk Forum report that comes out in January time to understand what some of those broader themes are. There's a big focus on technology in there, with lots of sub risks coming through as well and lots of insight. Have a look what those mean to you and investigate those uncertainties that could become the here and now. Often there are a number of unknowns that we can kind of detect, but as they become closer, we can get more information about them. That's where we can understand and we can start to assess them using our risk management process and approach. We can identify, can understand the causes and concerns, and then we can assess whether we've got adequate controls and systems in place to respond. Detect threats, but also opportunities early. Be proactive, use your risk management process but also share ideas and success stories. Share them with peers, other educational establishments. Use that network that you've got. Always good to share approach, responses that have worked and have proved successful for others.